Well, welcome everybody. I'm uh, Emily Reinhardt and I am the business manager at Davis Ranches here in uh, Calusa County. I started working for the family in 2010 as the project manager and my first project was to help work on restoration. And hey, Emily, uh, oh, I'm yes. sorry to interrupt, um, but that's okay. did you mean to share your screen? Oh, I did. Okay, we, <laughs> we don't see it. Let me try that again. Okay, um, there you go. Now. Okay, cool. Perfect. Great. <laughs> Thanks for catching that. Um, so Emily Reinhardt again. Hi, everybody. Um, I am the business manager today, and it's been 11 years of working at Davis Ranches, which has been really fun to see the progress. And I'm going to kick you off since we're not here on site. I'm going to help orient you here at the ranch. So this is a map of the Sacramento Valley, and it shows all the rice country. And Davis Ranches is located about six miles south of Calusa between the Sacramento River and the Calusa Wildlife Refuge. Originally, it was 8,000 acres and was established by Howell Davis in 1857. He started farming wheat and he ran cattle on the property and rice didn't come into production until 1919 on the property. And it is still farmed, that same acreage is still farmed by the great, great grandson of one of our first tenants, which is pretty great. In 1888, the, our patriarch Hal Davis passed away and his wife, Sabaya Davis, ended up running the ranch. And since then, the ranch has been successfully led by women, which is also very cool. Here's the family today. So the ranch is still owned by the same family. We are on our sixth and seventh generation of families. And we lease out most of our property, but we do farm some stuff in, in house. There are about 30 owners and they live all over the United States and overseas. The farm is run by a board of trustees who meet monthly and all the members get together once a year for a big annual meeting. So these are some photos from previous annual meetings. Uh, we try and organize a farm tour to help educate them on the local and industry issues that we are working through. In 2009, the ownership was reorganized. Uh, some of the family was ready to be done. And so the remaining owners sold off peripheral pieces to local farmers in the area. So we still maintain the 8,000 acres as our water district and we operate together. Um, but Davis Ranches now just owns the core piece. It's about 5,300 acres. And here's a typical crop map. So you can see that we have quite a lot of rice, which is where we started working with the birds. Um, but we also have row crop ground and about 200 acres of walnut. Added a little rice fact in there that we produce just on the property that Davis Ranches manages, uh, about 21 and a half million tons or pounds of milled rice every year, which is enough to feed everybody 26 pounds, which is the average US consum consumed number, um, everyone in San Francisco or the entire state of South Dakota. Um, okay, so the Davis family uh, really wants to maintain their heritage they have a really strong connection with the land and they want to be farming in the year 2100. So in working with the family, we have developed their kind of goals that they see making this possible. So they believe that by implementing sustainable farm practices, working collaboratively on conservation and integration on working land, that we can achieve farming in 2021 by by increasing public outreach, um, being involved in our community and striving to provide educational opportunities to learn about agriculture and conservation. So how did we start this? <laughs> we started restoring one acre in 2009. Um, and since then we've built a network of 34 different partners. They include private and public organizations, other farmers and um, NGOs. They've, they are helping shape our long-term goal of farming into the year 2100. Each partnership had, and project has shown us the power of incremental success. 
So here's a list of all of the projects that have been done in the last decade. Um, many of them are ongoing. Obviously, there's too many to talk about today, so I'm just going to focus on a few. Uh, but there is additional information at the end of the presentation, and Shelly will be providing this to you guys uh, should you want more information. There's also some helpful links. But these are the programs that I'm going to just touch on today. So we will start with our carbon farm plan. This was finished in 2019 with um, our partners at the Calusa County Resource Conservation District as our lead. Um, it's the first plan that's been written in Calusa County and it included a full survey of our operations to date. It documented what we've been doing well and where we can improve. There's a myriad of projects that have been identified that will help us increase our carbon sequestration and reduce our farming footprint, which is really interesting to see. Um, some of the practices that were called out were all of our conservation efforts, so permanent habitat and cover cropping, along with composting actually gets us the most carbon sequestration so far. Um, our next project is our Healthy Soils Demonstration Site. This is also facilitated by Calusa County Resource Conservation District in partnership with the UC Extension. Um, we received a grant from the Healthy Soils Program and we're working with our tenant farmer, Richter Ag, to test different cover crop mixes within a conventional system. I've included a link, there's a couple videos that talks specifically about this project, but the RCD has been doing a fantastic job um, putting together virtual field days so you guys can learn about healthy soil. Our next project is with um, the Community Alliance of Family Farmers. We are doing a cover crop trial in Walnut. This is one of our younger orchards, and it's looking at increasing soil health over three years. Um, so we are looking at nitrogen, carbon, soil organic matter, potassium, and phosphorus. And we're hoping that the results kind of help us fine tune our farming of our walnuts. Um, we're hopefully going to be integrating some habitat studies there as well. Um, but overall, we're really excited that it's definitely improving the soil quality year to year. Our first bird project is working with the Migratory Bird Partnership, um, specifically on our rice ground. And we have also participated in bird returns. We started working with Point Blue, Audubon, California, and the Nature Conservancy on the best management practices in rice fields. So we are looking at seasonal habitat, um, post-harvest, and how we can do um, better things in the field after we harvest instead of um, just disking and leaving it fallow. Uh, we've, just, we've helped develop best management practices there and we can provide a lot of habitat along the Pacific Flyway each year. Kara might talk about this a little bit, I'm not quite sure, but um, she's on the call today too. So in order to bring people out to the ranch to see what we are doing, we establish a, our first annual bird species count in 2011, and we do this every year at President's Day. It's a free event open to the public, and our goal is to document the total number of species we can see in one day. Um, and that's during kind of the peak of all of our flooded acreage and with all of our native habitat that's permanent, we are learning all the small, small, very difficult birds to see, which is really fun. Our record is 97 species and we hit that this year, but the total number to hit, if we could do it, would be 121. We also have a very active hunting club. Um, it was established initially to build um, conservation on the property. We have a very avid wood duck habitat program with uh, over 45 nesting boxes and we work with California waterfowl to provide nesting habitat. Each of the um, boxes are checked every year. We have a big field day. It's coming up in May. Um, it is also free and open to the public and people can learn how to build wood boxes um, and they also can help us check them. The funds that are generated through our hunting club are uh, dedicated to conservation every year and these are used as matching funds. So here's just a few of the fun stacks. 
to date. Uh, we've been doing the seasonal habitat for 11 years and we provide habitat for over 230 species, which is pretty awesome. Uh, so we'll go to our permanent habitat. Working with the Sacramento River Forum, they've actually been the facilitators of the Safe Harbor Agreement, which is through the US Fish and Wildlife. We have the only, or we had the first agreement in Calusa County um, and it protects our conservation efforts. So we are providing habitat for endangered species and that does make a landowner a little nervous, especially um, if you have a host plant or habitat in a place that you don't want and there's lots of restrictions. So this actually allows protection on both sides. Um, I've included a link here, it's quite an awesome program. They're focused along the whole Sacramento River riparian, and it's a pretty good stretch, um, but we're looking specifically to protect uh, the elderberry longhorn beetle and the Swainson hawk, giant garter snake, and probably the monarch butterfly here soon. Here is a map of all our um, hedgerows that are planted around the headquarters. We started around the headquarters because we wanted a place to bring people who came for meetings just right out the door and say, here's what's happening on the ag lands, but then also check out this great wildlife habitat. So um, these are some of the hedgerows there. To date, we started planning in 2009 and the goal was to establish 100 acres. So we've successfully restored 57 acres by planting with different groups and then also in-house to complement our river jungle of 36 acres. So we are at 93 acres so far. There's been 42 different species of natives planted on the property. And these hedgerows bring a lot of interest. So we give several tours a year usually. So um, we've been tracking that number and it's over 2000, which is pretty exciting. And over 300 of those have been students that have come to help um, on the property, help plant, learn about agriculture, learn about conservation, and careers that are around all of the industry, which is pretty neat. Oh, and then I threw in our little carbon, carbon sequestered to date, uh, which is pretty significant um, and shows the importance of having permanent habitat on the property. Um, each hedgerow is different in species and uh, the locations were also different as well. We're trying to figure out what we needed to do, what worked best, what worked best for ag, what worked best around the headquarters. And uh, so we have several different plant mixes and it is really beautiful in the spring when everything comes into bloom. Our first hydro was planted in 2009 along Sycamore Slough Road. This was done in-house and funded by Davis Ranches in partnership with Audubon as our advisors. We weren't sure what we were getting into. We didn't know how long it would take, what materials were needed, um, if our tenants would be excited about it. But this photo shows basically what it looks like. So it was a very clean field edge and the field, and then you have a road. So there's no habitat there for um, insects that would be beneficial for pollination or any birds. Um, so it's, it's amazing to see the progression over time. Again, here's our first oak tree dedicated to our leader of conservation, Pearl Devon. She was our chairwoman for the past decade. And here it is again, 10 years later. So it's pretty exciting to see. Our next hedro was planted in 2010. Uh, this one was the first section of Sycamore Slough, which is a, the um, historic tributary from the Sacramento River. This one was heavily grass focused. Um, because we had a grassland specialist on the team. So that was fun to learn the different native grasses and to see um, how recruitment happened over time. This uh, is our hedgerow along the entrance driveway. We had old walnuts that needed to be taken out. Um, and this area had been sprayed pretty rigor rigorously for the past probably 15 years. There's rumors that someone would land their plane there back in the day or maybe even go golfing because it was nice and flat and they didn't want anything growing there. But now it is um, successfully revegetated uh, and it provides a lot of great refuge. This project is with Morningstar and Unilever along with Audubon California. It was our first project that focused 
um, on all three sides of a row crop field. Um, so the hedgerows are actually plumbed in and we saw the most growth here because it was also getting fertigated at the same time, which is a pretty ingenious thing. Um, and our tenants actually came up with that idea. So it was pretty neat. Uh, our hedgerow along 45 gets a lot of attention. It's probably the largest front edge that we have on the property. Um, and it does provide a nice windbreak for between uh, the traffic and then all of our fields. And it's one of the prettiest. They tend to have the most poppies on this one. This is our Sneeze Barn, now known as the Mural Barn. And this is um, one of the central locations for all of our outdoor education events and workshops. This is an old dilapidated barn and one of our owners really wanted to save it. So we committed that be to, committed to having it be a centerpiece for all of our conservation work. And the plantings around the barn are uh, a demonstration of what the plants will look like over time. So when students are out and they're planting tiny little plugs of deer grass and they're like, well, what does this really look like? We have an opportunity to say, okay, well, here's, this is a little plant and this is what it will look like. In all of our habitat, we are working to provide monarch butterfly refuge and um, have included milkweed species as well. We have two different kinds that are naturally recruited on the property, which are the narrow leaf and the showy milkweed. But now we are working to figure out how to produce it um, on a more production scale so we can uh, grow out starts for the local area. This is another section of the slough that we were restored. Um, it was our burn pile. So you can see that there's a lot of effort that goes in. We changed the elevation. Um, it was very challenging to establish these grasses because it was right in the middle of the drought the first go around. Um, but here it is today, or here it is in 2019, and we have a nice conservation trail. So you can walk from the mural barn all the way out to the Sacramento River, which is pretty nice. This is the Sacramento River intake. This is where the sycamore slough would have originally connected to the river. Um, this one was exciting because this had the most variation of the forbs and flowers. Uh, we learned a lot on this hedgerow in terms of how to manage the weeds. It was very challenging because we had mixed broadleaves and grasses together. So you really had a tough time getting rid of the invasives without damaging the native species. And this is our longest hedgerow. So this is going to be connecting, uh, this is our main focus was connecting the river riparian all the way to the wildlife refuge the five and a half to seven and a half, depending on how you measure it, uh, miles of hedgerow. Uh, and this is a main thoroughfare. So all of the farmers on our property and several people in Galusta County cut through our property here and um, see our work. And it actually has inspired several of our neighbors to the south of us to start planting hedgerows as well. A lot of the work that we've done focuses um, on education, obviously, but we've been working with many seniors on their senior projects and they come out and learn about conservation. They do a public speaking event and um, they you know, document their hours and are present as a requirement to graduate high school. So it's been an opportunity to help kids there as well. And we finally finished this year, I guess it was mid pandemic. <laughs> with our final section that connects us all the way to the river, or from the river to the refuge. So for perspective, here's a map. You can see all of our hedgerow, hedgerows around the headquarters here. And we start at the river and then we go all the way to the refuge, um, which is pretty exciting. And that was one of our number one conservation goals other than 100 acres. And the total right now is 57. Many of the programs with students were coordinated through the SLUS program with Center for Land-Based Learning. Um, it is a nonprofit organization out of Yolo County. And we worked a lot with the Calusa High School Environmental Science Academy. And these are juniors and seniors in the area and they've been a really big help. And that's all I've got for me right now. I can take questions um, and I think that they're all be a chat box? Okay. 
Yeah, thank you so much, Emily. Um, yeah. We do have a, a question that came in. Um, so the question is, what is the optimal distance between hedgerows? Do they need to connect directly or if adjacent, what distance is recommended? Oh, that's a great question. Might be a better question for Sasha. I think she's working on connectivity. Um, I don't know if there's like a best distance, but I do think that the more there's connectivity, the better, just because you're not, um, you're allowing for more fluid movement and uh, safe refuge between all of them. So uh, if you can get them to connect, that's not a bad way to go. Great. Um, I So I don't see any other questions, but it, maybe we'll just hang out for a second and see if anybody else is adding any questions to the chat box. Um, we have a few minutes um, before we get started with Rachel's presentation. Um, yeah, anybody else have any questions? It looks like I have some direct ones that I can get. Oh. <laughs> um, so we have worked with Thursdays, not directly, but I've done a lot of um, field days with them. They do a lot of good public outreach and they do have an excellent species list if you are looking for ones in your area. And let's see here. Oh, wow. There's a, okay. Many of these I'm going to have to answer because I don't have the information. There's a question about uh, average rainfall, etc. So let me see here. The avian diversity is pretty extensive um, and it varies throughout the year. We see a lot more of the shorebirds uh, in the spring and early fall because they're migrating. We do have a lot of permanent small birds on the property. I can give you guys a full list of what we look for. There should be a link in the presentation um, and it documents what we've seen for the past three years. And then if you look on eBird, there's a full list of the 121 species that have been documented on our property to date. So if you're an avid birder and in the area, you're welcome to come out and try to find them all. Um, Emily. Oh, yeah. I, I did get another question. Um, okay. What are the economics of this work? Does it reduce field productivity? And um, do other farms nearby find this work intriguing or threatening? It's a great question. Um, so the economics are interesting. What we've been able to do with our matching funds, we've actually received several grants. And uh, we do have a budget, which I'm happy to share uh, with General Earthworks, uh, weed maintenance in terms of field prep for planting, and then the number of species we work with cornflower farms, hedgerow farms, and uh, I think it's floral native out of Chico. And they've been our main sources for the native plants. Um, all the prices are pretty similar, so I can, I'm happy to share that with you. And um, we are planting these hedgerows not in ag fields. They're on borders, on road edges, along waterways. So we're not taking fields out of production. Um, so we're not seeing a reduction of productivity um, in terms of agricultural productivity. And uh, farmers in the area, it's a mixed bag. So when we first started working, we got several letters from the uh, Coast County Farm Bureau and from the Ag Commissioner telling us to cease and desist because we were planting elderberries on our property. Um, and that is a controversial plant. As you know, it hosts the endangered species, the elderberry long, longhorn elderberry beetle. And uh, farmers really don't like that plant because if it's on your property, you can't remove it, especially if it's over one inch in diameter. But with our safe harbor agreement, it kind of protects ourselves and our neighbors. So if there is a plant that comes uh, comes to fruition in an inconvenient spot, say your field, we have an actual number of historic plants that have been documented on the property, and that's our baseline. So we can always go and remove something that's problematic and replace it, and our baseline is two. So we've planted probably 350 total, and if it ever really became a problem, we're protected with our safe harbor agreement. And we can reduce our number back to two if it ever became a real problem. 
But for the most part, our neighbors are really excited. And we, we have been seeing a lot of folks along Sycamore Slough start to do restoration, which is great. Great. I think we have time for um, this one last question that came in. Um, mm -hmm. What plants did Davis Ranch decide to plant in the hedgerows? So what plants do you have? Ooh, there's a lot of them. My favorite is probably the Dark Star Theonosis because it is a beautiful color. It's a very dark purple. I think they used, we used it in the invitation <laughs> to today's event. Um, we have red buds, we have toyon, coffee berry, um, mule fat. Uh, ooh, so many. I have a full species list uh, that I'm happy to share as well. But uh, there's also several different grasses that worked really, really well. The, the creeping wild rye was probably the most successful. It's hard to establish initially, but once it gets going, it is a nice ground cover. It thatches out all of the invasives. And uh, we actually have been using goats to graze all of our native habitat. And um, we've seen a lot of uh, positive response because we used to mow them. And that was time consuming and took a lot of gas and now we just have the goats out there and the, and the plants respond a lot better. Great. Um, so Emily, did I hear you correctly that you'd be willing to share your plant list with everyone? Yeah, no problem. Okay, great. Um, someone had just asked about that. Um, so yeah, we will um, send out with the recording. I can, I can include that in an updated resource in the resources. So okay. thank you so much, Emily. Um, we really appreciate your, your presentation and hosting us.